I want to say first and foremost good morning to the chairman and to the members and staff of the Health Policy Commission. Thank you for this opportunity to come before you today as you consider the next steps in implementing the new law ensuring safe patient limits in all hospital intensive care units in Massachusetts. I come before you as a registered nurse and a state representative. I have served on the Joint Committee on Healthcare Financing, which authored Chapter 224, and I serve on the Joint Committees on Public Health and the Joint Committee on Mental Health and Substance Abuse. The Health Policy Commission has been tasked with many challenges, many, many challenges. In a perfect world, the path to accessible, quality, cost-effective health care would have started with the discussion of what constitutes safe quality care, and the development of an acuity tool would have been the very first goal. However, the path, like many facets of health care, is not linear. As directed by Chapter 155 of the Acts of 2014, the Health Policy Commission is now charged to promulgate regulations governing the implementation and operation of safe patient care, including the formulation of the acuity tool, the method of reporting to the public on staffing compliance in hospital intensive care unit, and the identification of three to five patient safety quality indicators, which shall be measured and reported by hospitals to the public. These regulations need to guarantee that the most critically ill patients in our state's hospitals are receiving safe and appropriate care as determined by their condition. The very definition of intensive care demanded by the patient's condition should be delivered on a one-to-one -one basis. Some unique situations may allow for a two-to-one patient-to-nurse assignment. As many people gathered here know, legislative language is a final written product of a long, arduous process involving stakeholders and legislators. This particular legislation is the result of very hard work and years of work and tough choices for the legislature and the nurses who are standing for their patients, their practice, and their profession. Each word of the legislation was negotiated, is directed, and is deliberate. The words convey the legislative intent Overall, it is a very clear legislative intent. On this bill, which received a unanimous roll call in the House of Representatives, the clear intent is that direct care staff nurses will be involved with the decisions governing the development and adoption of the hospital's acuity tool. It is therefore just as important that direct care staff nurses are involved in the regulatory process to formulate the acuity tool and the public reporting mechanisms. I strongly caution the Health Policy Commission to avoid any ambiguity in this tool. However, to guard against this, it is also a deliberate goal of the legislature that the language ensures that staff nurses, the direct care nurse, make an assessment of the patient at the time of any questionable assignment, and that the direct care staff nurse should determine if that intensive care unit patient needs the sole focus of a nurse, or if that nurse can or should allow his or her attention and care of the patient to be divided. As a registered nurse in the course of a long and amazing career, I worked as a direct care staff nurse in medical and surgical intensive care units in the VA system, and in a surgical intensive care unit in a unionized teaching hospital, and in two medical surgical intensive care units and two unique non-union community hospitals. In 1978, please don't do the math on this one, I was one of only several hundred nurses in the country to be certified in critical care. I am not here today to speak to you about the specifics around what constitutes safe intensive care unit one-to-one -one patient assignment, or in what instances a two-to-one patient assignment could constitute a safe experience for the patient. However, I am here today with the mine representatives from the legislature. We know that the clinical judgment and the assessment skills of the nurse, which is the hallmark of the nursing profession, in all of the many health care givers there are, it is the assessment and the judgment of the nurse that sets that standard for professional practice. It is a fundamental part of ensuring that the law is enacted as it was intended. I urge you to look to the direct care staff nurses for guidance as you draft these regulations. I am here to share with you my experience that hospital organizations 
They have a variety of resources, including the number of direct care staff nurses available to them today. The hospital organizations, as the Health Policy Commission knows far better than I do, are facing many challenges. However, those factors which exist today cannot and should not impact the principles which will compel the Health Policy Commission work. The Health Policy Commission needs to fo focus all attention on the needs of the vulnerable, critically ill patient. The power of the promulgated regulations will determine the strength of the tool that is developed or chosen. The clarity of the tool will be <coughs> implementation and will determine safe quality care in intensive care units in all hospitals in Massachusetts. The most reliable voices of the assessment of the needs of the intensive care patient is the direct care staff nurse who is asked to make that assessment based on his or her judgment from hour to hour as they are practicing and in reality I would tell you it's from minute to minute. The Health Policy Commission is tasked to set the safety of care in intensive care units in all Massachusetts hospitals from the Berkshires to Boston and the Cape. The critically ill or injured Massachusetts patients needs and deserves safe quality care. The patient's needs must be the sole determinant, not geography and not a hospital's management ability to do what it can, but to do what it must. The hospitals of Massachusetts will comply with the regulations and the Health Policy Commission will set the standard for the quality of care. This is finally what all of our work has been about. We have worked hard concerning issues of access and cost containment, and now we are at the heart of the matter, ensuring care in health care. There can be no dispute. Patients need intensive care because without it, they will die. We need to be ensuring that they have the care they need. That's why intensive care units cost quote unquote big bucks. The Health Policy Commission, like the acutely ill intensive care unit patient, has no margin for error in this task. I continue to be grateful for the leadership demonstrated by the Health Policy Commission members and staff. I am available to help in any way, and as always, I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. So for my testimony,